All right, so we're going to go ahead and get started. So a lot of you guys are probably like so confused right now because you're like, girl, where are you? I'm in my closet, okay? I know it may look a little crazy right now. I'm trying to figure out setups and everything, but since I moved to a new home, it's kind of hard to manage everything. Still like very new to this. And so we're just trying out new different locations, but my vanity is in my closet. So that's why we're in my closet. That's enough of that. I'm going to go ahead. I know y'all can probably see a glare on my glasses. I'm about to put contacts in and both are in boom now we can see she's not blind no more should we do hair first or makeup first i'm gonna do makeup since my hair is already pulled back so y'all gonna see me looking a little rough for a little minute but it's all right it's all right y'all get over it right i'm gonna spit this gum out because i'm sure y'all probably annoyed i have a trash can right here i don't have very much space because i have my camera set up but i also have my laptop and everything like in front of me there's wires literally everywhere if y'all could see y'all would freak out it's actually kind of giving me anxiety right now but i'm trying not to look over to my right because that's where the chaos is and um yeah Ooh, I just did it. <laughs> this is literally stressing me out. But I'm gonna go ahead and turn on my light. So, hi, this is gonna be a chit chat. Get ready with me. I really wanna give like a few tips for like first time college students, upcoming college freshmen. Well, I don't have really any like specifics. I think some will apply to all schools, but since I do go to Georgia Southern, I feel like it may make the most sense. Someone speaking to someone who's thinking about going to Georgia Southern. I don't know. I just wanted to give y'all a few tips because some things that maybe I wish I would have known ahead of time just to prepare me. Not that anything was out of the ordinary and just I don't know something that I didn't feel prepared for but kind of in the same sense I didn't feel like I was prepared for it but we're gonna get into all that I have a few points I think I have 10 points some bigger points than others so it won't be too long that we're sitting here I don't think I'll try not to and I'll try and get my makeup done as fast as possible so in this video I'm not going to be explaining what exactly I'm doing I mean I hope you guys don't mind that I'm going to come out with a tutorial pretty soon on an updated makeup Makeup look because I feel like I haven't done a makeup tutorial in a long time because I haven't uploaded in a long time but I did again upload for the first time again this past Sunday and it made me feel really good I was slacking for the longest time that's not what we're talking about let's go ahead and hop right into these points okay these tips and tricks to navigate through your college career your first year at a university let's go ahead and get started as I apply my brow gel so the first thing that I have on the list is don't overthink the transition from high school to college I feel like I was kind of not really scared but in the moment I felt like I may have been underprepared transitioning from high school to college part of the reason being that I was in the class of 2020 so that weird class that you'll read about in history because of COVID and ain't get no prom ain't get no graduation and then seeing the people underneath me having no a prom this year yeah I'm a little bitter yeah I was part of that class it was a lot of unknown literally no one knew what was going on so I think that was part of what may have scared me but also I feel like maybe in high school teachers stress so much you won't be able to do this in college you won't be able to get away with this in college or there's this and that that you have to do in college and I feel like none of that stuff really mattered when it came down to the end of it well let me just say this first I did have to deal with a lot of online classes more than in person. I wasn't required to go in person all the time. Things within my major, the basic core curriculum classes, I didn't really have to worry about going in person. So maybe if that makes you feel like I may be biased to some topics or maybe I won't be the best resource, then click out of this. I'm only making this video to be resourceful for those who may be a little bit worried about transitioning from a high school student to a college freshman. You know, just helping prepare those that are coming up also <laughs> I was in AP classes and things like that so maybe that's why in the end I felt a little more prepared when I got dropped off I thought I would be in tears it would all hit me at once that I was going to college I like I'm here by myself but none of that actually happened at all when my mom left I was perfectly fine I went to sleep and had a great night's rest that night like I wasn't what's the word scared 
prepared I guess and I guess this has to do a lot with you knowing what school you want to go to and being comfortable in that environment and making sure that you made the right decision I mean I didn't feel uncomfortable in the slightest at all I immediately felt like it was home after I put up my decorations and everything and I never once had like a sleepless night thinking like oh my gosh I'm in college now and let's just be real everyone goes through that I don't think anyone can say that they didn't have like that one or two moments whatever it may have been of like being a little scared what the next year would look like as far as like adjusting to a different lifestyle and all that you know it really wasn't that bad and it just made sense in a way it was just like it was time I don't know it just felt right it was the next chapter obviously I had up to this moment I had I had put up the hours in high school and you know it was just the next step the next chapter like after you graduate I mean if this is for you don't ever feel like you have to go to college whether anyone is pressuring you to or not if you know it's not the right move do not cause yourself that debt do not cause yourself that stress because if you don't want to go to college you're not going to put in the work you're not going to get the grades and in the end you're paying for classes that you're not applying yourself to so no matter who's pressuring you into going to school and you don't feel like it's the right choice for you then don't don't do it um at the end of the day it's your life this is the next chapter of your life and nobody can control that but you it's this until the rest of your life college is a huge decision it's not just something like simple college debt can follow you literally i mean i don't mean to sound morbid but to your grave and if it's not the right choice for you if you don't feel like college is the best fit for you don't do it or maybe just enroll online don't pay to go in dorms don't do all that enroll in an online class and see like what classes may be like and maybe just do a year or a semester and go from there but please do not waste your money okay that is the best advice that I could give but yeah the transition felt fine it felt natural it just felt like it was the next step and I didn't feel underprepared in the initial transition now I feel like back to when I said I feel like teachers may be like oh you'll never be able to get away with this in college or you'll never be able to do this in college and da -da 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 -da, none of this will pass and I'm being so light on you your college professors will never be this lenient girl I don't know if it was because I was in the class of corona but girl I did the same thing I did in high school if not let's be real I may have slacked off even more I don't want y'all to think I'm telling you guys to slack off because I'm definitely not I still got first semester I got all A's second semester I got a B um so I'm not telling you to like completely slack off but I will say that I feel like I didn't have to do as much as high school teachers prepared you to do. oh my gosh y'all my life just flashed before my eyes. Thought I lost my camera forever. Bring it back in focus. Oh my gosh. Okay, what was I even saying? I feel like I didn't have to do as much as high school teachers prepared us for. Um, Y'all, it was not that big of a difference from high school. The freedom part, yes. If you were good with managing school in high school, I'm almost positive you'll be able to do it in college. Um, Why do my brows look so bad? <laughs> I don't know I probably should have done my brows beforehand this brow actually looks pretty good but this one here why does it curve like that hold on let me fix my brow up and then I'll come right back. all right my brows look crazy but I, I think at this point we're just gonna move on because I don't feel like messing with it right now basically I did the same that I did in high school I didn't feel like anything big really changed but just knowing what time management is I did that's the only thing that I would say you would have to apply more um, attention to than maybe you did in high school because you know you have so much freedom and you'll think that you'll have all this time in the world but then you'll forget about this or you forget about that so just making sure that your time management and times time managing oh my god and let's be real I wasn't the best at it I always procrastinated it's just in my nature just knowing the difference between procrastinating a little bit and slacking off and not putting in 100% effort and I know some people may think that that's the same thing but to me I feel like they're different if I procrastinate and still get it done and I come out with an A on the assignment in the end then procrastinating works for me if that makes sense or maybe what I think is procrastinating to me isn't procrastinating to you and so I'm doing 
doing enough. I'm doing my bare minimum, but it may be your absolute most. So when you procrastinate, you may end up doing worse off. I don't know if I've said that in like the best way, but I'll try and put like something on the screen if I feel like I can explain it better when I'm editing. Just doing and knowing what works for you. The only thing that I think that you really have to take from high school is, you know, those routines that you set, whatever works for you to study for an assignment or, or for a test or something, make sure that you're still doing that. Um, you may have to put in a little bit more, you may have to put in a little bit less, it all depends. But as far as like assignments goes, I don't really think anything is of more of a rigor than what I learned in high school. And like I said, I was in a lot of AP classes, so maybe that dictated a lot, but I wasn't in all AP classes and I got a feel of all spectrum of classes, I feel like. You know, I don't feel like I had to put in any more work as far as more research or anything like that. Um, I did have a few, like, not even a few. I had like one or two long, long papers that were maybe six pages, but I feel like in the end, in high school, you've kind of learned how to do that. I don't know how to explain it, but I mean, to me, a tip for that, if, if papers is what you're worried about, a tip for that, if you're worried about meeting the requirements and having the bare minimum, I always just really know what topic I'm writing about or I was assigned. And then I just go to the email app on my phone. And then before I start typing, I'll actually just click the voice or the microphone in the corner and I'll just talk about it. So I'll set aside, I'll be like, okay, right now I'm about to do my introduction. I'll get the microphone, talk about it, kind of, you know, warm up to the assignment and then email that to myself, copy paste it into a Word doc and then be like, oh, I'm about to do my first body. Know what I want to talk about, talk about it. And it, I promise you, it'll help you get that word count a lot more. And it may seem a little more natural in your writing than you being overzealous and looking for all these big words to add to your essay to spice it up. It'll seem a little more natural with using words that you use. And maybe in the end, when you're revising, you can add bigger words or more vocabulary if that's what you want to do. But in the end, I don't feel like anything was any like that crazy. Um, I did only experience my first year, so maybe that's it. But I feel like it's the best opinion to get right now. Like I just went through it. It's fresh on my mind. So I can tell you how the first year was like. But as far as my first year, nothing was crazy. Not anything like I feel like people at this point scared you into thinking because it was not that bad. At least to me, it wasn't. I didn't feel like it was bad at all. All right. I know I may look a little crazy right now, but just trust the process. Okay. We're about to move on to the next tip. And I decided to just get ahead a little bit in my makeup because I spent a little too much time on my eyebrows. So the next thing is to make friends with your professors. Now, I'm not saying this at all in a way that you have to be buddy buddy with your professor. I'm not saying that you have to be a kiss ass. I'm not saying that you have to be a teacher's pet, but make sure that your professors know who you are. It's, I mean, it's not as intense as this, but you know when like in like a code red drill, you may have heard that if you ever come face to face with a shooter to kind of start saying things about you, your family, to add personality or make you more of human than an object or an obstacle in the way of them or between them and a gun. So just adding personality to yourself, not making it that seem like you're just another student in their class, but making it, putting a face to the name. These professors go through way more students than high school teachers. You know, they probably rarely ever come across a student who like actually introduces themselves to them and things like that. You know, something that my mom always taught me and something that she did when she was in college was make sure that her professors knew who she was. Every single one. Um, Just whether that be the first day of classes and going up and introducing yourself and being like, hey, my name's Kira. I'm a student in your class and I just wanted to, you know, introduce myself and, um, you know, kind of get acquainted with who you are and da da da. This immediately grabs the teacher's attention Um, and I, I, I don't want it to just stop there at the first day but I'm saying this because it like I said it adds a face to the name it gives you a personality it gives it, it makes you a human rather than another student or a name on their roster so my mom like I said always taught me to do this and you're probably wondering why do I need to do this what's the point it's the most important when maybe you miss an assignment or you were late on an assignment or you may have not done the best on a test or an exam and you know now you're looking for a little boost you may it may be at the end of the semester you're at like a 88 and you want to see what you can do to get an A. Now if you're just another face 
face or another name on their roster, they're probably not going to pay much attention to you. But if you're a student who is always like actively communicating or even like say it's a previous assignment, you actually got an A on, but you may have gotten just like a 92. Sending out an email, whether you care or not, <laughs> let's be real, I've sent out so many emails and I really don't care. Whether you care or not, just be like, um, what could I have done to get a 100? You know, it takes two seconds to send an email. You don't even have to do it face to face. Um, at least it was way easier for me to get away with that um, this year, but literally they send your assignment grades through the computer. It takes two seconds to click on the teacher's name and send them an email. What could I have done to do a or get a A? Um, what could I have done to get a 100 and stuff like that? Like I said, you really do not have to care at all because I never cared. As long as I got a passing grade, I didn't care. In the end, it helps the most because my first semester, I got all A's, but at, basically at the cutoff of grades and like submitting assignments, I had two B's and I had 288 to be honest. And I emailed both of my teachers after I had been communicating through with them the whole semester, um, always turning in my assignments on time, doing this and that. And when I reached out to them and I was like, is there anything that I can do? Both of these teachers have in their syllabus, no extra credit, don't ask for me to boost your grade. But I still, my camera stopped recording and I hope it didn't cut off too far back. I still emailed them because I kind of had already had a relationship with the teachers just what what can I do to get my grade to an A now and both of them gave me a little assignment it wasn't much at all I think one of them I literally just had to write a paragraph on the last chapter that we did just kind of summarizing it and that was it I turned it in no that class I actually had an 87 I turned it in and I came out of that class with a 91 for one paragraph so I'm not gonna say that this is like the end all be all the life hack of college and if you do this in every class every teacher will automatically you know boost your grades if you need them because it doesn't always work for every teacher but it doesn't hurt to do it it doesn't hurt to put in that effort if you really want the grade it doesn't hurt to send one email or two emails one to two emails a month like it it doesn't hurt to do it it takes two seconds if you you can literally copy and paste the same email across every single teacher and just send that like it doesn't take a lot it never takes a lot and it for the most part pays off in the end. I did this in high school and it didn't work as much as it did in college as it did in high school. Um, so, you know, high school teachers can be a little more lenient. <laughs> But, um, you know, just developing the relationship, whether you care to do it or not, try it. And, you know, you never know. It may be your make or break from, it may not even be an A to, or a B to an A, but it may be an F to a D to pass. If the teacher sees that you are constantly emailing about grades, you're constantly checking up on your grades, you're constantly seeing what you can do throughout the semester, then they're not just gonna turn a blind ear to you. Is that the same? A blind eye, blind ear? They're not just gonna turn their back on you. They're probably, most teachers do not wanna see you fail. I know it may seem like it, but most teachers do not, especially in high school. For those of you who are entering your senior year, literally do, you can do the bare minimum and still graduate. Graduate, I don't care if you know that you're not gonna go to college, make sure that you get your high school diploma. I don't care, I don't care. I've seen so many people drop out their senior year, their second semester. You know how dumb that is? I don't wanna call people out, but do you know how stupid that is? You're literally right at the finish line your toe is literally in the water why don't you just jump in like literally most high school teachers especially your senior year will do anything and everything to see you walk across the stage whether they actually show that they care or not so just turn in the assignments just do whatever you need to to get the grade graduate and walk and if you want to go to college or if you don't graduate i'm just saying all this because it did for me help in the end to get my grade boosted it did i mean some of you guys may not care some of you guys as long as you pass you don't care but like i said it may not be the a to or b to an a it may be that f to a d to get you to pass so just send an email whether it's one email in the beginning or just a few frequent emails like once a month do something to make sure that your professors know that you're actively trying whether you are or not and 
most likely they will help you out in the end so just a quick tip and it helps all right so my next tip is to make friends but make sure that you're setting boundaries i don't want to i don't know how to go about this because i don't want any of my friends from this year to think that i'm talking about them specifically or like they always did this it was kind of just like a one-time thing be friendly with everyone make as many friends as you want but make sure for one that it doesn't come in the way of you you, between you walking that stage for graduation once you complete your college career do not let it define you do not if they say oh you're you're so lame because you don't want to go out or you're so lame because you don't want to do this and you don't want to do that or you never want to do this or you never want to do that first of all we're grown adults at this point once you walk into that dorm on a college campus you are an adult and if anyone is treating you that way they need to grow up they're childish because though college is all about the experience Experience, but it's also about getting your degree so that you can be successful after college. College is not just the four years, it goes beyond that. And the decisions you make throughout your college career will in the end define your life for the rest of your life. Do not let that stand in the way of that. And I'm, again, I'm not saying this, any of my friends that are watching, I'm not saying that any of you guys did this, but it's just making sure that people know the difference between that. Make sure that you know how to say no. It's okay to say no if you know that you have a test the next day and and you haven't studied the best for it but there's a huge party and it's on a Wednesday night and you your friends are just like you just have to go it's okay to say no um I'm not gonna lie sometimes I have put parties over studying and everything that's a normal thing but when it comes become something repetitive you need to know when to set that boundary make sure that all your friends know that it's not just about the parties to you and that you actually care about that's the wrong one. <laughs> I have to smell it to make sure I know which one is. One of them is mixed with something else, so I have to smell it. Those probably seem so weird. But make sure that they know that you actually care about the grade if you actually do. And make sure that they know that. And if they don't support that, then honestly, just find new friends. Because friends are there to help you, not to hinder you. And if they're stopping you from being successful, then they're not your friend, baby. They are. They sure are. I have a few ex-friends that may have done that. I'm probably going to cut that out. Because <laughs> I ain't here to start no mess. Never me. But I'm just saying, make sure that you set those boundaries. This one's kind of a small point and kind of like an obvious. It may seem like obvious to some people, but some people it may not be that obvious. And, you know, just make sure that you make it apparent in the beginning. Do not wait and let them, in a sense, walk over you in the beginning and then wait till the end to do it. And just make sure that they know up front. And if they don't want to be your friend at that point, then save yourself the time. <laughs> to be honest. That also goes into the next point, which is knowing your limits. This can be on a lot of things. If you choose to indulge in drinking, knowing your limits with that, because that can become a more serious manner if you go past your limits. So just make sure that you know that. I'm not encouraging underage drinking, but I'm just letting you know because situations happen and I never want it to be anyone just making sure that you know your own personal limits but also making sure that you know your limits of how much you can procrastinate how much is too much for you how much isn't enough knowing what your full potential is versus slacking off and knowing when you're doing your absolute best knowing yourself pretty much know your own personal limits that's something that you need to know during college or before entering college just knowing your own limits and you can take that that can go so many different ways it can um, hit so many different points but just I'm just gonna leave that broad point out there to know your limits and take it as you choose this also goes into the next point and I know y'all probably think that at this point they're kind of getting repetitive but I feel like these next or these past three points including this one that I'm about to say are different and maybe people don't realize the difference and that's why they may get caught up into something have fun but not too much fun make sure that you know like I said you came to school to get your degree not just the party make sure you know oh my gosh I just realized I didn't put on foundation I do do my foundation after my concealer and my bronzer, but I forgot to do it before I started setting my face. Great job, Kira. Basically saying all that, 
to say do not limit yourself to only being inside your whole college career because i'm sure that sucks i made sure to have fun especially first semester i was always out but like i said first semester i did the best with my grade even though i was out literally every weekend i always had something to do even during the week just knowing what's too much for you knowing how to balance don't always say no but make sure that you know exactly when to say no and if that makes sense i don't know if i'm explaining that in the best way i don't know have fun college is meant for you to have fun but just know your limits know how much fun you can have know the difference between the people who just go to party and the people who actually want to graduate and actually want to be successful in life just differentiating people and separating them from yourself if they don't share the same ideas make sure that you don't get too close to those people to where they may hinder you from getting to your goals you don't have to just not be friends with them i'm sure everyone has a friend who's like a slacker but you know just make sure that you know that that's not you don't be influenced by them or let them hinder you from being successful i don't know how to word that but take that as you choose i'm just putting that out there all right so back to classes make sure that you're setting your alarms and try your hardest not to miss classes now i guess this kind of makes me sound like a hypocrite but i did not go to every class and i did have the option of going in person i'm gonna clean this off in a minute don't worry but yes i didn't really have to go in person but i never even like for some classes even tried to make an effort of going in person because I simply just didn't want to or the in-person classes that I had I'm not gonna lie I did say a few times that I may have been exposed to corona and I probably should sit out class and I probably shouldn't play with something so serious but yeah I did not go always go to class but do not just not go to class the zoom calls especially some of you guys may be experiencing a lot of those first year make just call on the zoom call most of them don't make you have the camera on so at least just show up get the attendance some teachers take attendance some teachers don't and you never really know who does and who doesn't because i know a friend who didn't realize that the teacher actually took attendance until like further on in the semester and the attendance was a grade and now they can't do anything about that because they didn't attend zoom class you know just show up try not to miss classes you know that goes back to putting a face to the name letting your professor know that you're actually an active student and you know it'll help you in the end like I said also missing class may cause you to get far behind and that's where you may have to put in a lot more work maybe that's what teachers were trying to trying to prepare you for in high school but you know just try and stay up on your classes which is another point on my list stay up on your classes I know I had like I had a mixture I had some classes that were half in person half online some that were completely online and some that were completely in person and the classes that were completely online I would wait till the very last minute to turn in everything and those classes you have completely free reign of what you want to do I call them soft due dates and hard due dates the soft due dates are like days that you teachers suggest that you should have something done so that it doesn't become overwhelming in the end so you know you don't actually have to turn anything in but it's just kind of like a guy to make sure that you're staying on track and knowing that you're not getting behind um and then the hard due dates are the days that you actually have to turn everything in and it's a turn it in or get a zero um and i usually i used to wait till the hard due dates to turn in everything for my completely online classes which sucks let me tell you i did it for english and i never learned my lesson but i did it every single time and i had to turn in like nine different assignments all at once and i was usually doing like six or seven of them within one day to try and make the deadline so just make sure that you're staying up on your classes so that school doesn't become something more stressful than it has to be school is literally just paper and pencil and turnitin.com like <laughs> do not let that stress you out do not let that overwhelm you just get as far ahead of the curve as you can so that you will never get sweet underneath it all right so my next tip is to make sure that you know who your advisor is and actually go to those registration calls or whatever it may be they tell you the bare minimum in those calls like what you where you need to go to register and once you go through it the one time you kind of don't need to do it again but make sure that you're doing it because at the in the end they can even help you get that 
grade you know a lot of your advisors they have a more personal connection between the student and them um as opposed to teachers who the advisors are kind of it's their job to have that connection with the student and I love my advisor because as soon as I got on the call she would you know say my name like hey how are you doing um be like how is this in this class going and it was makes you feel comfortable so be comfortable with your advisor um they're there to help you like that's literally their only job is to sit there and literally help you they make your schedules they they do everything they can be your connection into um you know maybe you're trying to get into a club and you have to have this specific gpa um to get into it um maybe the advisor can try and find a way for you to make it in and like make a you know the advisors are like that secret that secret weapon so you know just have that connection with the advisor make sure that you're getting up on time for registrations um the advisors don't actually go out there and choose your classes for you you actually have to get up and register um so if you're not doing that then you're not going to get classes or you'll end up with the classes with the worst teacher on rate my professor and you're going to be stuck in that class or you're going to get the 8 a.m classes like i did um so get actually get up on registration i know it sucks to get up that early in the morning to register for a class on a computer but you know it'll be worth it in the end because 8 a.m's are not a joke you may be like mm, i could probably do it no baby you can't once you're actually in it you can't just back out of it no you can't <laughs> and when you have to get up every morning at seven in the morning to make it to your 8 a.m class it's gonna suck yes it is you know just make sure that you're communicating with your advisor make sure that you're actually going to registration and in the end all of this i'm telling you all of this just to help you it may i don't really feel like it seems like a lot of work this is literally just the bare minimum i mean at least to me but you know doing these steps will help you if you you know this will give Give you that little wiggle room to slap all right so the next thing is to man, what was i about to say oh the next thing is to put forth the most work your freshman year make your freshman year that buffer year so that you know maybe whether it be sophomore year or senior year there's going to be one year let's be real that your grades probably aren't going to do the best as they did the year before or previous years make sure that you have that buffer there go ahead your freshman year when you're come basically freshmen are going to be the most focused on school um so just why not just put in a few more hours of work to get those grades i made sure to get those a's um this past year so that i would have wiggle room need be if senior year i want to do whatever and I have that room to do that and it won't completely mess up my GPA and I know GPA in college doesn't really matter as much as it did in high school um but those of you who may be entering high school and you may have found my channel those of you transitioning from middle school to high school um this is a good tip for you as well make your freshman year your best year my freshman year in high school i did the same thing that i did in college i got all a's so make that buffer year so that later on when you get senioritis it won't really affect your gpa as much which it matters a lot then because that's what colleges look at your gpa that number those little numbers and make or break which college you get into so you know freshman year go ahead and crank her out i know y'all are probably looking at my face because it it doesn't look that even as even as it could because i forgot to put foundation on which would kind of tone down the contrast because i used a super light concealer and a pretty dark contour so the foundation goes over top of that and it softens everything out but since i forgot to do that it may look a little cool so yeah let's just ignore that should i put should i do eyeshadow like for real for real i'm gonna do something so simple all right i'm gonna go ahead and finish my eyes off camera and then i'll come back to say the last tip because i also have to do lips my hair and all that so i'm gonna finish all this off camera and then i'll come back to let y'all know what's up oh y'all in on that eat all right so i am back eyes and eyeshadow are done we have our lips lined i did also highlight as you can see your girl is beaming okay but i just don't like to be looking too matte on camera i'm getting ready to film a shein haul so i have to have a little bit of a little shimmer so i don't be looking too washed out on camera you know what i'm saying 
I need to tone down my moles a little bit though. Yeah, I'm back and we're about to put on some gloss. But my next tip would have to be know your roommate and put your foot down. My roommates were the most disgusting girls that I've ever had to live with. They let food rot in the fridge. They didn't take out the trash. They didn't wash their dishes. They put dirty dishes with food in it in the sink. It was just disgusting. Thing. and I just want to release it out there because you know I feel like I was so nice to them and I shouldn't have been as nice as I was but this is not to bash my roommates specifically and I never have to live with them again so it doesn't matter but just make sure that you're setting those boundaries make sure that you're being clean and make sure that you're being respectful of the fact that you're sharing a space with someone else I know what is clean to me may not be clean to you and what is not clean to me may be clean to you I understand that everyone has their different perspectives but just be respectful of the fact that other people are living there with you and you know it's not like they can just get up and leave and they're not going to be your maid or vice versa so just be respectful of everyone everyone's boundaries making sure that even though you know you may have free time and you like to listen to music don't blast it super loud in the room because your roommates may be studying whether they say it or not um you know wash your dishes as you go clean out the fridge if you know that you left something in there in the fridge and it stinks take it out like just common courtesy things just make sure that you're doing that um and you know just respect the living space especially if you have a common area in your place do whatever you want in your room but keep those common areas clean because other people may want to bring people over and they feel like they can't because they're roommates you know just be respectful of other people's time other people's place other people's privacy other people's living space clean up after yourself just respect other people and that's all i'm gonna say on that because i could go on and on and on but that's not over here for today i'm just giving y'all tips but know your roommates and set those boundaries in the beginning and if they don't respect them say something about it i've been loving the gloss lately i think it looks really good with this eyeshadow too but yeah so we're gonna go ahead and do my hair which i don't know how i'm gonna do because i don't have an outlet near here and i want to blow my hair out i just want it a little bit bigger and a little more volume spray protect it oh my gosh it's like empty my hair has been looking healthier lately i don't know what that's about but i mean if we can stay on this track i'd love it up real fast i know i look crazy all right you guys so that's pretty much it for this video i hope you guys enjoyed and actually found my tips helpful i hit every single point that was in my notes and i just hope i did the best my best at describing them or explaining them to you guys and letting you guys know exactly what you need to know to enter your freshman year of college I just want y'all to go out there, have fun, be safe, be careful, make good choices based off of this list. This is like the guidelines, the rule book for making it in college. Why am I clapping so much? I do not know. But that's pretty much it for this video. I put on my jewelry, as you guys can see. Fluffed up my hair a little bit more. Oh, the earrings. Gotta let y'all see the earrings because they're super cute. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. I really hope you guys enjoyed and honestly genuinely really found these tips helpful um they are just the things that i did throughout college to help me this past year and i think they worked pretty decently well i had a great time i didn't limit myself to anything um always open at trying something new i explored with all of my friends i made new friends and lots of them at that i got my grades i did my best academically and you know these are the things that i just did so if i can help any of you guys by passing this on and clearing some of you guys's nerve then you know i just wanted to do that for you guys so i hope it helped a lot and that you guys actually found it resourceful and can use these tips throughout your whole college and and even some high school students can use them. But for those of you attending Georgia Southern, I just want you guys to have fun. I personally love this school. And if you need an opinion on slaying you to go, um, do it. The only thing is if you love city life, you may want to think about maybe Georgia State or something like that. Um, because Statesboro is just like a town. There's not much that you can do out there. But we definitely have fun. Don't get it twisted. There's always a party. There's always something going on. But as far as like maybe you want 
to go shopping you may have to drive to savannah no you actually will the mall only has five stores in it but you know it's cool <laughs> It's worth the drive. Road trips are fun. And yeah, but I love you guys so much and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye guys. Mm -hmm.